Greetings. This yoga class is best done with a partner, perhaps uh, about this big, but um, it doesn't matter. As long as they're moving around with you, you can do it uh, alone too, of course. It's just going to be a little bit more um, children based in the sense that a lot of the common cues that you're going to get to move the body are going to be based more on body parts and in particular um, body parts that are a little bit more uh, understandable like uh, you know belly button and words like that so anyways that's just a warning for you guys so for the adults, the breathing, I really want you to focus on this. For the kids, they got to focus on just moving and trying to put the right body parts here and there. So breathing is important. That's something you can work on with them later. But if they're new to movement or if they're just figuring out a routine, then just let them do their thing. Your breath, however, is going to be very active. And I call it the elevator breath. So let's pretend you have three floors in your body of the first floor. Actually, the first floor is down here. I'm not talking about. You got the basement of your body, which is the pelvic floor. Then you have this little uh, diaphragm that kind of moves up and down on the breath. It changes shape in your body when you breathe. And that's your first floor. So when you exhale, you're going to squeeze up a little bit. You're not clenching in like you're trying to hold in a really, like you have to go to the bathroom really, really bad. Maybe just a little bit. And you ex when you exhale, you're going to squeeze up like a tube of toothpaste and you're going to go up into the first floor and then the second floor, which is the breathing diaphragm everyone's familiar with. And then um, the third floor is up here in the throat and then out the back of your throat. It doesn't have to be super loud. I'll be a little bit extra loud so you you get that, you know, that cue, that audio cue, but you don't have to be that loud. And then when you breathe in, you're just trying to create space in the body. So don't breathe in and be like, and then stick your pelvis forward and make a big Buddha belly. You're trying to just breathe in and push down everything that you're lifting up on the exhale. So it's just release and stabilize. That's it. And the reason we do this is to stabilize the low back, the pelvic region, and also to build some strength and to classically incorporate all the bandhas, which are the breathing diaphragms in the body. When you inhale, you're trying to create space and loosen things up a little bit because we do get chronic tension, especially if you've ever had uh, a child, if you've ever given birth, right? Or if you've ever had any problems with the low back, uh, if you sit a lot, and in general, our society is very tension-based. So if you get a lot of the withdrawal response, which to exaggerate, it's like, um, which I believe that we get a lot of when we drive, particularly if you drive in a heavily congested area, in an impatient area like New England, Boston, Massachusetts in particular. I think driving really stresses us out, um, even if you only drive a few minutes a day. At some point, you know, with about a 20 to 30 minute drive, we generally, especially with all the text messaging and crap that people are doing in their cars that don't have to do with focusing on the road, I think we get a lot of scary moments. You know, we see people swerving. At some point, we almost get hit, you know, uh, pretty often, or we see other people almost get into accidents. So we, we have a lot of this in our lives. If you ever feel like something's going to be taken away, you know, like a big financial hit or, um, you know, you're worried for somebody, something big is happening, you know, someone's got a, a, a disease you just found out about, there's a lot of this. There's a lot of that withdrawal response. We get super tight here. We don't even know that we're holding on to it a lot of the time. So the inhale is trying to create some space and looseness in the body. And this is just good breathing to do if you're tense, if you don't feel good, if you're starting to get a headache or whatever. Something is being caused by tension, lack of sleep, um, or you wake up in the middle of the night. So just kind of keep this breath in mind. I'm not going to be cueing it to death because guess what? you got to move those kids around, okay? Um, if you want to do more adult-based videos, i got plenty of those. So make sure you subscribe and all that good junk. Okay, so if you don't have blocks, it's no problem. You can use books that are of a similar height or even soup cans, like particularly those big cans of like tomato paste can work really well as substitutes. Just make sure they're, you know, relatively level heights here. We're going to start on all fours, also known as cat cow or meow moo, right? So <clears throat> as you inhale, you're going to create the, the cow position. 
So you'll see that I have a pretty um, big curve in the low back. That's just because I have a curvy low back and I've worked very hard to not have it so curved all the time. I'm always constantly tipping the pelvis forward. It's not you know, great for your posture. Um, so you don't have to tilt so much that you look like this. I want you to feel that you have a pretty good natural curve in your low back, whatever that means for you, and that your heart is pulling forward. And then when you exhale, you're pulling that elevator up from the basement up to the first floor, the second floor. We're just creating length. And I'm just going to round the upper body to get a stretch. You don't have to round the upper body if you don't like to. But what we're trying to avoid here is inhale. And then as you exhale, we're not trying to avoid this. I'm not trying to tuck the tailbone forward. I'm not saying you can't do that a couple times if it doesn't feel good. But I think we do enough of this over flattening and even curving of the sacral area in our life. So I think it's important that we just learn to create length and stability. So just keep doing that. Moo. Meow. Right? And just keep the breath moving. And you can make any crazy sound you want. And then from here, we're going to bend the arms and sort of wiggle the hips. So I want you to, to really be in touch with your tailbone area and where the two leg bones connect into your hip sockets, also known as the sit bones. But in general, just wag your tail. Make sure you have, feel a little bit of freedom there. And if you do it on an inhale, you'll be a little more open, a little more free. If you do it on an exhale, you should still feel some movement. So when you take the toes back and you stretch the bottoms of the feet, that should feel really good. Press more into your finger bones and <clears throat> rather than your palms. Your weight is going to naturally go into your wrists. So your job is to spread your fingers and press the connection point between the fingers and the palms strongly into the floor. And then instead of locking out your arms, which is essentially locking out you know, proper communication between the hands and the shoulders, have a soft bend. So if you're a chronic hyperextender, as I am and used to be more of, that's going to be pretty tough. It's going to take some time, but just do your best. All right, take an inhale and pause. As you exhale, bringing up the breath through the elevator, come up to your downward dog. So this is downward dog. If you need to be on your knees at any point, you can do that. You just call it downward puppy. That, that all works. Your feet might have to be wide, and your legs should have a soft bend. Most people are going to have to have a, a fairly sizable bend if you're not used to doing a lot of yoga because you really want to have that tailbone free. You want to be able to wiggle your hips. So you'll see a lot of people lock their legs out and then they pull their chest in and now they've locked themselves out. They've got this little wiggle and I already feel my tailbone tucking down. So you want to have a pretty free position here. As you inhale, maybe bend the legs a little more. When you exhale, squeeze and lift from the low belly, take the knees down and come to a plank position. I'm going to move the hands out a little bit further. I'm going to roll the inner elbows, the elbow creases forward. And then from here, I'm going to lift the low belly and try to come down with my belly button and then my heart and then my nose. And then squeeze my elbows into my body, hug my body with my elbows. I'm going to inhale, press my toenails into the floor. And then when I exhale, I'm going to try to now curl my belly button and my heart up. And then reach my nose to the sky. And then when I exhale, I'll come back. Let's repeat that a couple times. You can always come up to down dog from here if you want, or just stay and lift maybe up to your finger pads if your hands, wrists, and forearms are getting a little tired. Take an inhale, wag your tail. As you exhale, curl the tail in just enough to get forward to plank. Take your knees down if you're feeling like you need that. And then from here, take a breath in. And then exhale, come way forward so you have a giraffe neck. Take your belly button, heart, and nose. Breathe in, press your toenails, hug your arms. Exhale, curl your belly, heart, and then lift your nose to the sky. Inhale. And then as you exhale, maybe you take the knees down, or maybe you take a rounder position, drawing the tail into your body and coming up to down dog. You can always be on your knees for any of this. We're going to take that one more time. Inhale, get nice and bouncy. Exhale, maybe take the knees down and start to wave forward. Belly button, heart, nose. Inhale, hug your arms, press your toes. 
Exhale, curl the belly. And then inhale, exhale, take it back. And then from here, little kids like to do donkey kicks. So let them do the donkey kick. And hey, there's nothing stopping you no matter how old you are. So when you inhale, bend, look forward, mostly with your eyes. And then when you exhale, maybe you take a little jump. It doesn't matter how high you go. This is not the donkey kick Olympic, so just have fun with it. Inhale, exhale. Maybe inhale, exhale. Maybe you can't get that far for whatever reason, so you just walk up to the front of your mat and you're like, well, I just want to get to the front of my mat. Take your feet as wide as you can. Bend your knees a lot. Grab opposite elbows. Give those hands a break. And then a lot of times you'll see kids do stuff like this. That's fine. Interlace those fingers. Inhale, press into the floor, and then exhale. Start to lengthen through the front of the body. Forward, the back of the body goes back. You don't have to stay like this. It's just something fun to try. If you can't interlace your fingers, it's no biggie. You just grab a towel and do the same thing. Anyway, squiggle those feet closer together. When you inhale, you're going to feel the back of your body open. When you exhale, feel your belly lighten off of your legs. It's still touching. And then come up to a chair. So now you're sitting in a chair. If your arms don't like to be up, you can take genie arms. And you don't have to be in chair for too long. Now make sure your kid's breathing. It's important. No blue faces. Maybe sit a little deeper. Maybe use the blocks for support. See how long you guys can sit in your imaginary chair until somebody has to come down. And then take your hands down. Step your left foot back. Now here's a very important thing to do. If you're doing yoga with a small child, there's an implication that you're either maybe pregnant with another one or you may be struggling with some uh, baby weight. So you might have a lot of flesh here. You might just have a lot of flesh here. You might have both, right, which is fine. Um, so when you want to compensate for that while you're working on, you know, building the strength and getting your metabolism up so that eventually goes away, um, you'll see me framing my foot with my hands a lot. Well, when I was a bit heavier and I had more belly, because everything goes in my belly, as well as these, I could feel a little claustrophobic at times. So if you have extra flesh in the front of your body at all, take your hands on the inside, widen the width between your feet. <sighs> now you can breathe better, right? So that's just important to understand. A lot of times when... Um, we're doing yoga. It doesn't even matter if you've got the extra flesh or not. You might just need to widen for one reason or another. Flexibility might be an issue. So feel free to have your hands on the inside. We're just kind of stretching out a little bit here. So just make sure you're breathing. And then from here, we're going to work on our balance low to the ground, right? Because we kind of want to be eye level or, or thereabout. So... <clears throat> Turn your toe under if you know balance is going to be a bit of an issue. When you start looking for a challenge, you release the toes and press your toenails into the floor. That's really important. All right, so I'm going to use the blocks for this. When you inhale, feel everything expand, especially that right butt. And then when you exhale, start to lift from the basement to the first floor. And then as that comes up, when you start coming up to the second floor, then you're going to start to rise, and then as the breath finishes, you can kind of come into that natural curve. You can take your arms up if you want and inhale and enjoy that. You could take cactus arms, be a cactus, and turn different directions, just making sure you're swiveling from here. You can just work on the balance. Press the front of your foot into the floor. Press your whole back leg into the floor. It's your knee, your shin. Uh, top of your foot, toenails, everything. And just have fun here. Take the left hand down on something. Try to keep your left hip from collapsing down. And then, this will be fun, reach your right hand back. Now this works better if you have like, you know, a kid right over here with their left foot in front. Okay, so they'll be doing a different side than you are. And you're just going to make a circle, do what I call stringing the bow. 
just do this a few times because we all know children don't like to sit still very much for the most part. So all this movement is going to be really good. And then from here, you can take the hand down on the inside, on the outside, your choice. Tuck the toe under, come back to your dog, wag your tail, inhale, get low and pouncy. Exhale, start to curl forward, belly button, heart, nose. Inhale, hug your elbows, press your toenails. Exhale, curl your belly button and heart and then nose to the sky. Exhale, with or without knees, take it back to downward dog. Get the feet together at the back of the mat. Inhale, exhale, donkey kick. Inhale, exhale, donkey kick. And then maybe on the next one you walk up because you're a little tired or maybe you jump to the front. No matter, bend, inhale, shake. And then as you exhale, curling from the low belly, taking the weight off your hip creases, come up and sit in your chair again. Maybe take your hands somewhere else, I don't know. When you're done, exhale, take it down, step the right foot back. So we're just, again, working a little bit of, a little back and forth. Keep the breath moving though. Keep it working. So at this point, you may have had your little one move over to this side of you now. And they're going to have their right foot in front. And you'll see how this works. So if you feel like you're done, and do this as long as you need to. If you're looking for a challenge, take that foot flat. Take a nice inhale. Inhale all the way down into your left butt. Shake the booty. Exhale. Start to lift up from the basement. Now remember, these cues really aren't going to work for most kids. They don't have that body awareness, but this is for you. Inhale, maybe arms to the top. If you feel like you're going to topple over, topple over into each other. It's a lot of fun because you're going to tend to fall over to the side of your front leg. So this is where it gets fun. Lots of um, physical slapstick comedy could be happening right now. So pressing the back shin, knee, and toenails. Pressing the front heel and the ball of your big little toe. And then take your right hand down. Now you should be looking at each other. So maybe their left hand is down. That's important. And then reach your free arm back. And then you'll sweep it. And the whole idea is to try to do this without making contact with one another, right? To do it right, you wouldn't be touching one another. But you might want to do like high five here. You know. It all depends. Some kids take their yoga very seriously. And others are just all... Fun and games. Take the hand down. This time we're going to step forward. You're going to inhale. And then as you exhale, squeeze up from here. And then take the foot forward from your core. And then you're just going to take the rag doll. Shake side to side. Try not to wiggle the hips. You know, if you're the adult. Be a little adultier. Don't wiggle the hips so much. And then from here, inhale. Exhale, squeeze and lift. And then instead of chair, just stand up. Now this is where it gets super fun. So you're gonna turn to your partner. Moxie, come. She's my lazy one. Yeah, see she's stretching. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna lift, you're gonna lift, uh, mirror each other. So come here, come. All right. So lazy this one. Up. All right, Moo Moo, come here. Up. Yes. Okay, so this is what you're going to do. You're going to hold hands. See, now Moxie's jealous. And you're going to take this crossing of the legs. Really flex your foot. My toes are like wicked flexed here. And then you're just going to go as slow as you can. And hopefully your child doesn't lick your face. Although, ugh, if they do, they do. And then just try and hold as long as you can. I'm sure much comedy will ensue in some way, whether you're falling or just looking deep into each other's eyes and you can't keep a straight face. And then you take it down. I'm just gonna switch sides. They'll switch sides with you. So you wanna mimic that sitting in a chair. So if you're like rounding in the low spine and you're hunching, that's not the position you're going for. So this is actually really good for your strength. And you may not be able to hold it at all. It's fine. It's not the point. We're not, again, training for any some sort of weird sports competition. Good. 
Thank you, Moomoo. Thank you. Thank you for helping. Moomoo's probably more the size of about a three or four year old when she stands up anyways. Moxie's like a seven or eight year old. And you're lazy. Okay. So when you're done with that, come on down. And then the last thing that I would say to do before you start stretching and getting down to the end of it is if your child is small enough, have them lie underneath you and then take the blocks or soup cans or whatever the heck you're using, put them up nice and high, work a little upper body strength. Take them a little bit more narrow than you think your shoulders are. Take your knees way back and then come forward. See I'm rolling my inner elbows forward and I'm squeezing my body with my arms. You may not be able to go very far. Use your, use your exhale, this is important. Exhale, take it forward. And then maybe stop for a moment and rest here. When you're in a position like this, you might want to breathe more into your chest because you're trying to hold the front of your spine up and in. And then the exhale is more active. You can push it back. Then you can, of course, challenge the other child to do their thing. And from there, everybody comes to their backs. You can do as many times as you want. Pause the video. Come to your back. And then here's where it can get very interesting. So take that pigeon position again, right foot over. And you can have your partner go ahead and do the same thing. You can also have them be your helper and stand at the front of the mat and keep this foot down by pressing it in to the floor. And you can take your arms up if you want, or you can take them behind your head like you're at the beach. Important though that you keep all this tension out of your neck and shoulders, so giraffe neck. When you inhale, fill up, feel the back of your body press into the earth. When you exhale, squeeze and lift from the front of your low spine, lift up that elevator, and then let the body come up as a result. And you're having your partner hold down your foot just to make sure, just in case your strength is at a really low level right now, for whatever reason, that you have a little anchor there, right? And also to remind you that one of the reasons you're trying to get in better shape and trying to be healthy is because of that little anchor that's holding you down right now. Because you can say whatever you like, but you know at some point you figure out that kids learn from example. So when you create that example, you're going to be an inspiration. And it may not be right away, but I guarantee you it does infiltrate a kid's mind and memory when they see one or both parents taking care of themselves. Good. And then from there, you might want to turn this into a stretch, right? So you can... Send your anchor away, and they can come and do this with you. Most kids find this pretty fun. A little thread the needle. If you're feeling intense stretching, like, oh, gosh, don't do this. You know, take it down and enjoy the stretch from there. Or you can take your right arm in between the legs and just, you know, maybe go a little side to side. Don't go too much side to side if you're not uh, used to this kind of stretching. But Chances are, most kids, when they draw their legs up into their back in any way, they're going to be rocking side to side. Or you can just stay still. And then maybe if they're next to you and they're doing their left foot, you can give them a little, like, high five with the feet, you know. And then let the legs come up, shake everything out. And then right foot down, and maybe you send your anchor back to do their job. And then squeeze and lifting from the bottom of your body. That's your basement. Your little pelvic floor there. Continually rippling up the front of your spine. This is just creating stability. And it's also creating this really um, deep inner strength in some of the most important muscles of your core. So it's not just about six packs. It's about stabilizing your center. We'll do this one more time. You can always make a funny face, especially if that person holding you down is able to kind of look at you from where they're at. And then we'll take it in, 
Have them come over to your right side, do their right foot, and then a little high five there with the feet. Take it side to side. Pull it in. So if you notice that maybe this hip's a little tighter, maybe stay here a little longer. It's always good. You're not in a class setting right now. You can pause the video and you can work on any imbalances in your body. And sure enough, we all have them. So if this side is tighter, stay here. If the other side was, maybe go back. We'll unravel blah, 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 from here. And then from there, we're going to do windshield wipers. So windshield wipers, we don't want to do them like it's pouring rain out. We want to do it like it's just a gentle drizzle, but it's just hard enough of a rain that it's annoying us and we can't really see through the windshield. So we're just going to go down. Just remember that your transitions from pose to pose, in my opinion, are more important than getting to a particular pose. How do you get there? You know, do you get there breathing and working with your body, not going too far? Do you try to feel what's going on? Do you take your time? Or are you so focused on the next position that you just want to get there as quickly as possible? And that kind of might, you know, that might reflect a little bit of how you are off of the mat too. Some people are very destination driven and I think that creates a lot of anxiety. So how about enjoying the millions of steps in between each destination on our life timeline? All right, now from here, this can be kind of fun. Um, rock and roll. Every kid likes to rock and roll, but most kids, especially under a certain age, don't quite have the strength and they don't quite have the uh, lever length in the legs to get them up. But just try. This could be, this is a really good goal. If the kid can't come all the way up, if you can't come all the way up, no biggie. And I find that separating the legs gives you a good starting point too. All right. And then from there, that's all you have to do. Or if you want to stay down again and then teach a little bit of how to stand still, lay still, whatever it is, you can do this Shavasana pose here. And then if your child has a hard time laying down and doing nothing, have them count their breaths. So we want to do 10 full breath cycles minimum, but if your child doesn't understand the difference between inhale and exhale being one and inhale, exhale being one and two, maybe have them count to 20. Say breathe 20 times. At the worst, they lay down longer. Big deal, right? For you, you know that you're inhaling and exhaling 10 full cycles. And then once you're done with that, super important, one leg at a time comes up, swivel yourself to a fetal position, and then practice getting up, making sure that your body gets up first, head, neck, and shoulders are the last thing. And then you can do whatever you like from there. So there's your workout, with or without a partner. It's still a pretty good thing to do, especially if you're working towards strength. If you're working from a point of rebuilding your body from a surgery or from a long period of time off in physical activity, or maybe you just feel like you want to move, but you want it to be gentle. So um, the bunny has come out to say goodbye to you. I would like to thank Mumu for her participation and the bunny for coming out at the very end because I think he secretly likes attention and is a bit of a show off. So uh, if you like this video, uh, like it then actually by pressing that little button down there with the thumbs up and subscribe and then share because chances are you have people that can benefit from this video in your life. All right. Thanks. Have a great day.